During part one of our Activity 2.1 Keep Me in the Loop tutorial, we went ahead and looked at the activity introduction and had a main focus on what procedures and abstractions look like. Today we're going to go ahead and take a look at how to download that starter code and import it into MIT App Inventor. Once it's imported into MIT App Inventor, we'll go ahead and take a closer look at what starter code was actually given to us. In order to do this, we're going to need to go ahead and select our A21 Keep Me in the Loop AIA file and click on it to download it from our computer. Once your file has been downloaded, we then need to navigate to MIT App Inventor where we will need to import this into our projects. By doing this, we can select My Projects and Import Project from Computer. Once you select that, you will need to choose the file and find out where that file has been downloaded. Once your file has been located, select the file, select Open, and then click OK. Here your file will be imported into MIT App Inventor. Now let's take a look at what the user interface looks like before moving on to our block view. Here you will notice that we have been given a canvas where the background image has been set to your bus route or bus map. You have also been given an image sprite called School Bus that will be able to navigate around the screen. We have also been given a Start and Reset button along with the tracing label that will be used to trace the route when the bus moves. We will be looking at this tracing label in a later tutorial. Now that we have our bus map and all laid out, let's go ahead and take a look at what the block view looks like and what those blocks actually mean. So here you'll see that when you get to your block view, all your coding has already been collapsed for you. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at what each of these blocks actually means and what they do. So one of the first things we're going to look at is our variables. So taking a look at these variables, we can simply open these variables by double clicking and you will notice that there are comments for each of your actual variable. Now for a closer look, let's take a look at what those comments state for each of our three variables. You'll notice that we have an initial X, an initial Y, and a map block size variable. For your X and Y global variables, basically we are going to need to set those properties to position our school bus at the school. Right now, if we take a look at our map, you're going to notice that the school bus is kind of off to the side of the school. We want to make sure that we move that school bus so it is located directly at the school. We'll be adjusting those properties at a later time. You will also notice that you have a map block size variable as well. That basically is setting your map size to kind of meet your screen's needs. So we will not need to really worry about adjusting the map size at this time. That's kind of already set for us in that adjust component size procedure that we're going to look at in just a minute. Now the next thing we're going to go ahead and take a look at is our reset button. And when looking at our reset button, you're going to notice that there's several different commands that we need to focus on. For your reset button, basically what we're looking at doing is moving the bus back to its original location. And the way that that's done is we are calling the school bus to move back to that initial global X and global Y. Once we set those properties to go wherever we need it to go as far as relationship to the school, that bus will return when the reset button is clicked. We also have a canvas one clear, which will actually move those tracing line labels that we will draw on our home screen or user interface when the bus moves. We will also be resetting the school bus heading to zero, which basically means we're going to be making sure that our school bus is facing in a north position. The tracing label text will also be set to blank during this time. So once we take a look at our reset button and we've already taken a look at our actual variables, the next thing for us to look at is what happens when the screen is actually initialized. So here you'll notice that you have basically three commands and one of them that is actually disabled. And when looking at that disabled, we're going to notice that there's been some comments left for us. So let's take a closer look at what that screen one initialize actually does. In this case, once our app is launched for that first time or initialized, it's basically going to go ahead and place that school bus on the X and Y coordinates. We're also going to make sure that all of our component size are adjusted, so no matter what type of device you are on, it's going to fit nice and neat. And this is something that has already been given to us. It's not something we have to worry about actually coding. 
That block that is grayed out or disabled is mainly set for us to trace all the values when adjusting the component sizes. So that's something that we don't have to worry about as well. We're gonna go ahead and make sure that that one stays disabled as we move through this. Now that we have our initialized screen looked at, the next thing to take a look at is going to be our actual procedures. And here we have our turn left procedure. You will also have your turn right procedure. And then we're gonna also take a look at what happens when our bus moves forward. Now you will notice that our turn left and turn right are pretty straightforward. The move forward is a little bit more involved and we need to definitely take a closer look at this one, especially when we move forward with tracing our lines. So taking a look at those procedures, you're gonna notice that in that turn left procedure, we have a whole bunch of code and that's where we have that abstraction where the user really doesn't need to see all of that code behind the scenes. All they need to do is that when they call turn left, your bus is now gonna be turning left from its current position. So if your bus is facing a north position, it would turn and now facing a west position and so on and so forth. The same is also gonna be true for that turn right procedure. Now looking at our move forward procedure, what's happening here is not only is that bus moving forward, but we're also looking at creating these lines. And you're gonna notice that as we get down a little bit further, we're basically calling canvas one to draw a line. And those lines that are gonna be drawn are meant to basically create that tracing label so we can see the route that the bus is taking. We will need to modify some of this later on when we program our actual route. Now the next two procedures that we're gonna go ahead and look at are things that we don't really need to adjust but it is worth taking a look at to see what they do. And those are your component sizes, as well as adjusting the component sizes when the screen is initialized. So you'll notice that there is a lot of information going on here. So taking a closer look here, what we're gonna see with our component sizes or adjusting the component size, when our screen is initialized, we're basically using this code to make sure that that canvas fits on whichever device we are actually using. When we take a closer look at the component sizes, this is gonna take a look at all of your tracing labels and adjust them to the canvas's height and width. Now we will also take a look at those two procedures and how neither of them really need to be modified for this activity. So a good rule of thumb for this is to make sure that those two procedures stay collapsed so we don't end up moving any of those blocks around. Now that we have a better understanding of what our blocks look like, now we can get ready to start to program our routes and test our app in our next video tutorial.